Toto, how are you? I'm well, Cynthia, how are you? I'm good. Awesome. So I wanted to ask you a few questions mm -hmm. for the, um, the GNSA. Okay, great. Um, so my first question is, what is your title? Well, as of right now, I am the interim director for the School of Nursing for George Mason University. And prior to that, I was the assistant dean for um, the basically graduate programs, um, not non-PhD graduate programs, so MSN, DMP. Okay, mm -hmm. great, great. And please describe your nursing work and career. Example, how did you get into your current position or research? Okay, so my career. My career has been primarily pediatric nursing and nursing leadership. And they do actually relate. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Some of the skills you use in pediatrics, you use in your leadership roles. So um, I have been, uh, you know, a pediatric nurse, a NICU nurse, an ER nurse, and PDR nurse. Um, I've also, you know, floated through other different areas. That's my nursing. Mm -hmm. uh, about six or seven years into nursing, I was uh, promoted to the director of a pediatric unit, which led to the director of a pediatric emergency room direct, uh unit, which led to the director of all three, not just separately, yeah. of an outpatient pediatric unit, mm -hmm. which led to the director of OB and uh, nursery and NICU. So pretty much the director of the first floor, except ED, right. but about a year later, mm -hmm. the emergency room was added to my, so I was the director of the first floor at the yeah. hospital I was at. So it was fun. Yeah. Um, and then I went back and got my nurse practitioner because I really felt like I was missing yeah. that patient uh, interaction and finished that up um, while consulting mm -hmm. for a community health center, which I helped to plan open and it is currently has three sites now, but um, it still wasn't my passion. <laughs> um, so went back in and worked as a nurse practitioner for a while mm -hmm. and uh, did some sane nursing, did that kind of stuff. Was mm -hmm. still raising three boys oh. um, and then found a position in a, uh, to be the the director of a pediatric ER at a children's hospital, which was really kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Did that for a few years and then went back and got my doctorate and I ended up in academics. So here I am. <laughs> so I came here to teach and now I am the director of the school of nursing. So oh. I kind of feel like sometimes it's your passion is what you really love doing, right. um, but your calling is what you end up doing. <laughs> I agree. Sometimes, yeah. I totally agree with that. How would you describe your leadership in the nursing and healthcare field? Uh, my type of leadership, mm -hmm. I would say, is very, uh, I try to be very authentic um, in how I approach people. Mm -hmm. um, I think I feel at the core of every organization that is successful is happy mm -hmm. uh, and satisfied uh, workers. And mm -hmm. so here it would be faculty and staff, um, as well as our students, because our students really are our, our pop, that's our patients, yes. you know, in the real world. It's, it is our clients, and so we need to make them feel part of this um, and a lot of our graduate students really do become pseudo faculty in a way mm -hmm. so we love to have our students working with our undergraduates almost a novice to expert approach yeah. and so I do that I also am a little bit of a transformational leader in that I truly believe that we should always be in in looking at the evidence and informing right. our practice so I bring that into my leadership role mm -hmm. as well as my nurse practitioner role and I agree, that's basically what I'm doing as a graduate nurse, mm -hmm. um, student teaching here, helping teach here, mm -hmm. which I'm very appreciative for. So yeah. thank you for that. Sure. What specific issues in nursing and healthcare does it address? I, mean, I guess with what you, as far as the academic. Oh, okay. So we're preparing the next generation, right, of mm -hmm. leaders and uh, of of nurse leaders, of um, nurses, right? Mm -hmm. I think all nurses are leaders yeah, at absolutely. some point, and I do believe that nursing is being called to really influence and lead health yes. of the future. And so we are we have the skills, the knowledge, and the ability to do that. And so now we need to create our nurses into more thinkers, right? Okay. And so it's that nurse thinking that doesn't allow us to not just sit at the table, mm -hmm. but to set the table and um, to really kind of really lead where where we uh, assist in patients, in, in empowering patients mm -hmm. to own their own health. And I think nurses are really in a position to do that. Okay, I mm -hmm. agree. Okay. What are the gaps in the science that your research addresses? 
So I'm not a primary researcher, I'm an implementation scientist, and so mm -hmm. we know where the gaps are. The gaps are from research to practice. Right. Um, we're trying to, as DMPs, mm -hmm. decrease that gap from research to practice. Um, where do I think we need some work in our school or we, we can really mm -hmm. impact is around the opioid crisis. We're doing a lot of work around that, really looking at the primary care or public and population health mm -hmm. uh, arena yeah. as a, as a uh, entry to practice for our BSN students. Um, I think everyone thinks they need to go to the hospital and they really just <laughs> don't. Um, and so, and then, you know, care mm -hmm. transition teams, mm -hmm. um, but also in um, looking at who's our next educators, right? Yes. And so that, mm -hmm. that, is looking a little different, right? Yeah. So are we including simulation expertise in our educator program? Mm -hmm. Are we doing those things? And those are what I'm looking at right now. But what really is the, the strong evidence mm -hmm. to support simulation to replace actual clinical time? And I, I feel, mm -hmm. believe there needs to be a little more research around that. Yeah. Uh, and I would love to do that here at George Great. Mason. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. So I think you kind of answered this mm -hmm. a, a little bit. What is the significance of this? Yeah, well, so I think yeah, I did too, yeah. this, and, and then the impact will be a, a healthier workforce um, Absolutely. that is prepared to really meet the needs of our, of our populations. Yeah. yeah. So how does this relate to the state and the national policy and priorities? Well, I think what I talked about was a national priority, it definitely is, yes, uh, which is the opioid crisis, yes. uh, really looking at um, mm -hmm. care transitions and uh, uh, less, less hospital stays, more... Yes community yes. uh, impact out there um, mm -hmm. looking at simulation of course mm -hmm. as a as, because clinical sites are tough, they are tough um, yeah. and changing that level of thinking mm -hmm. uh, and that nurses are embracing that they are leaders mm -hmm. and they will ca they can impact um, health care at a mm -hmm. policy level yes. at a practice level mm -hmm. at a research level I agree education really truly all of that mm -hmm. I agree mm -hmm. all right so what will be better in nursing and healthcare because of your science and leadership, which you have addressed that, mm -hmm. right? How does your science and leadership relate to local and state and national policies? We have addressed that. Mm -hmm. How do you expect to inform or translate your research into healthcare policy? Well, a lot of that is being done by our students that graduate and then go out there and really do uh, in form. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of former students that are mm -hmm. active in the Virginia Council of Nurse Practitioners yes. at a legislative level. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of our students that are, are really at a national level uh, really talking about what they what mm -hmm. they have done in their DMP projects, in their research, yes. that kind of thing. Um, at a state level, we have a researcher here that's looking at bruising. Yeah. And, and we think, well, bruising, what is that? Well, you know, there, there is different bruising oh, yeah. stages mm -hmm. that are often not detectable until very late in darker skinned um, people and that kind of thing. So um, we're really looking at that as a, as a, you know, mm -hmm. how can we better improve uh, trauma, yes. you know, trauma mm -hmm. care, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I and know. is there other information that you would like to provide regarding the program, the research, and scholarships that George Mason has to offer or that? Mm -hmm. So George Mason um, is currently has a, a minimum of three, or, or nursing does, mm -hmm. um, has a minimum of three to four HRSA grants, mm -hmm. um, another two to three SAMHSA grants. These are all practice grants and training grants that will help our nurses to really uh, work at the highest level. And so um, that that really has been given us the ability um, and the funding uh, and the resources to make that happen. Um, and so at George Mason, we say uh, health starts here or yeah. health is visible, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and especially through our College of Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. where we're roping to the College of Public Health under the direction of Dr. Uh, Jermaine Lewis, who is a national speaker on public health um, initiatives and so I do see that our, our university mm -hmm. uh, specifically our college is really moving forward mm -hmm. in meeting the demands of our, our pop of our public right yeah, I do, and our I do public's agree. health <laughs> yes with the mm -hmm. mop clinics in mm -hmm. the area and we've been yes I, yeah I couldn't agree so I do do think we need to add in there that that Mason 
is one of the first universities that's really been able to not only implement nurse-led clinics, but to grow to 10 clinics that, that are sustainable yes. and that really can meet the needs of our community. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. we're very grateful for that. What advice do you have for the next generation of nursing leaders? To embrace their vulnerability and just get out there okay. and see where this journey leads them. I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a pleasure. It is always a pleasure. And I will see you. Thank you. <laughs>